Hi and welcome to the second part of the 10 amp current chant project. In this video I thought we'd take a bit of a more detailed look on one of the boards, since I happen to have it out of the frame, and go through some of the design goals of, of it. So, starting off, we've got the mechanics. We very early on decided we wanted a 5x5cm five five board in order to keep the cost down. We purchased this board from Seed Studio, uh, where they the 5x5 five five boards are considerably cheaper than the alternatives, and I don't have too much money. That uh, also limited us to four power devices, and <laughs> due to the fact that we also, very early on, decided we wanted as many free hole parts as possible, it uh, forced us to use a linear regulator, which had to go with heat sink in order to bring the 12-ish volts that this thing is going to run on down to 5 volts before finally going down to 3.3 in order to power the processor. So we were limited to three power devices for actually shunting the current which uh, forced us to get some fairly high-end ones. These are NXP brand Buck 9508s which uh, are designed for linear loads rather than just switching as uh, most high power MOSFETs these days are. We also fairly early on this, uh, found out that we needed to use some rather compact connectors. So we've run these uh, two millimeter spaced uh, JST connectors for the all the data stuff. We've got uh, two IOs on each board since these boards can be daisy chained and uh, also have one front panel header which has uh, one LED output and one uh, button. For the actual power connectors we didn't want any custom stuff which would require crimping so we just went for screw terminals here. These are some uh, pretty standard, although they are brand names, uh, 16 amp capable or perhaps even 18 amp capable screw terminals. Pretty much as standard as you can get them. Same as pin spacing is on the relay. Fitting suitably enough. Now, on the underside of the board, we have uh, the few surface mount components which we were forced to use, namely the processor, which is an STM32 of some variation, and a uh, MCP60 quad op amp. The processor was chosen mostly because it had suitable features, and the f my friend, who's doing all the programming, is used to working with them and quite fond of them and the op-amp was chosen due to it being rather low offset and having rail-to-rail -rail capability, which is important since uh, the both the op-amp and the processor are running on 3.3 volts and uh, driving MOSFETs of our VAT, uh, while well, these are fairly fancy MOSFETs, it's, you, you want to be able to go rail-to-rail -to -rail just to, in case you have a bad MOSFET which requires a lot of voltage in order to turn on enough. Another design requirement for this device was that it would have to be electrically isolated from the computer it was connected to as well as from the other loads in the daisy chain. The primary design target being to be able to daisy chain four of these together in order to test four devices at the same time. So we also have two optocouplers here which are just uh, connected to a UART on the processor providing an optically isolated serial port and we also have an unisolated serial port with 3.3 volt levels which uh, go to the isolated port on the next unit in the chain allowing all the units to be isolated from each other and the computer they're connected to. This is in order to be able to test uh, battery chains which are connected together so if you have a 48 volt system you can connect all four loads in this box to one of the batteries without uh, causing any explosions because if all the grounds were the same or all the positives were the same uh, well <laughs> you would be shorting out what, uh, three of the batteries and you can't have that, that would just blow fuses and cause fires doing that also made the thermal design of this thing a bit tricky since uh, you can't you can't get enough power out of an isolated MOSFET so we need to use uh, isolating pads for these transistors which in turn since we're just running three power devices makes the thermals actually quite tight 
we can't really allow the heat sink at the point of contact to go much above 50 degrees in order to keep our junction temperature okay due to the rather high thermal resistance of the uh, cooling paste, uh, isolating pad cooling paste addition. Now the primary feature of this device is to be connected up to a computer and uh, able to log data over time. Since we want to, be to keep the cost down, we chose not to have any actual feedback on the current, so we needed to use some fairly tight uh, specification components in order to ensure that the current sync, which is just a very basic uh, uh, analog op-amp control, the current sync, which is prog programmed through a PWM out to the processor, we needed to ensure that uh, setting it to 10 amp uh, calibrated it would actually result in 10 amps continuously. So we used these uh, rather low drift uh, and rather special looking load resistors you know, in order to make sure that our 10 amps is actually 10 amps. These resistors are also very, very nice because these are 3 watt uh, resistors and uh, they can be fit on a board and they st stay reasonably cool since the thermal resistance from the actual resistor down to the leads is quite high. They are very nice, although not too mechanically sturdy. Now, in order to assist the unit in data logging, in case of a communications failure with the computer, we also added a 512 kilobyte EEPROM to it. So, this thing can do internal data logging as well, although it just has a pretty bog standard, I believe, 8 megahertz crystal. So, the timekeeping isn't going to be uh, too fancy, but uh, it's going to do. It's a good backup, just in case the PC interface fails, you won't lose your data. You'll be able to read it out later on. It also enables the units to run standalone if need be. So you can, for instance, just plant this uh, big heatsink box out in the field if you want to test a remote battery or something, and uh, leave it running, go somewhere else and read the data out when you get back. Uh, one of the prime features, uh, most notably, is also the large orange relay which is uh, intended to connect to an external charger so that uh, once the unit has uh, run a load test on a battery it'll change the state of a relay and connect a charger to the charger to the system allowing you to essentially let, it, let this unit run completely standalone with no human intervention. The relay is 250 volts compatible, it's got taking up a lot of board space due to the isolation uh, required for that, although in my application I'm going to run this on the DC side. Due to that we chose a 16 amp relay, so that we, you can run it decently on uh, on the low voltage side, you can use a 16 amp charger. You, you aren't limited to something like 5 amp uh, 230 volt thing, which would require you to run a lot of 230 volt wiring inside of a case, which can be a bit uh, unpleasant, it's risky. Now the primary way this unit is going to be used, or is supposed to be used, is as a standalone data logging current sync for batteries. And in order to keep everything simple, we wanted to minimize the need for external power supplies. Since these units are isolated from each other, you would need either four isolated power supplies or four different isolated wall walls in order to run them. These units are able to run off the device under test and will just uh, calibrate the actual power draw for unit itself away in software. However, since this is one another purpose of this device is to be able to run on very low voltages, uh, it also supports the running off of an external more than 10 volt power supply, which is coming through one of these uh, terminal blocks here. Now, due to the fact that this uh, unit also is a fairly high current device, uh, we have implemented four wire voltage measuring. So, this terminal block here is the one that runs to the actual load. This is where your 10 amps is going to be flowing. But uh, this terminal block over here is going to be connected to a little wire. I've made a Cat5 wiring harness, which uh, you hook up in parallel in order to measure the voltage uh, directly on at the device under test. And uh, this allows us to essentially use fairly thin wiring for the actual current sink, uh, partially in low lowering the cost and partially <laughs> reducing the power dissipation of the transistors. 
because the specification we want to do to this is 150 watts capability but that really is stretching the limits of what these transistors can reliably do in the application we have them in due to the high thermal resistance of the isolating pads again. So the four-wire measurement is a really important feature. This also allows us to do very accurate specification uh, or characterization of batteries since we can measure the exact voltage at the terminals of the battery at any time without having to consider any voltage drops in the cables. It also allows us to use basically any random cables we want it out of the front panel of the computer of the uh, box and it isn't going to affect the measurements. Also, while it isn't implemented in either software or on my boards yet, uh, these units also have support for an NTC resistor here on this pin header uh, in order to provide temperature compensation if necess necessary, it shouldn't be, but uh, primarily in order to provide AV over temperature protection. Since because since we're running such tight thermals on this thing, uh, it really is important to keep that in mind. If we have a fan failure uh, and we don't have any per board thermal protection, they, all the boards are going to destroy themselves because uh, dissipating a hundred and something watts through these transistors into a passively cooled heatsink is just not feasible but due to the low temperature this heatsink needs to have. You you would basically require some form of water cooling in order to run a so-called passive system on this. And that basically sums up the purpose of this unit. It's a 10 amp data logging constant current sync, which can be programmed from a computer in order to do basically anything. The current is adjustable through the PC interface, as soon as we get the firmware running properly, and... Uh, the logging is going to go to the computer as well through R232 and it's going to be a rather nice battery testing device We're going to, I'm going to be able to pull very exact discharge curves out of my batteries and it's also going to be able to you know, characterize power supplies over time uh, the internal voltage meter has a resolution of, of about 20 millivolts and a range of uh, zero volts t up to about 20, I believe 19 is the current uh, setting. We actually, actually had to do a bit of a bodge uh, since we uh, the board designer missed it on the order. Oh, this little bodge here is actually a, an over voltage protection for the ADC of the microprocessor since the current measurement sy system was able to output too much voltage into it to begin with. And this is a little senior diode that's uh, currently limiting us to about 20 volts on the in input and also preventing us from blowing the microcontroller up in case you put too much voltage on the voltage uh, input. And as for the accuracy of this unit, we didn't really specify anything when designing it. We uh, It's running off of a, the reference on it is uh, a reasonable low drift 3.3 volt uh, linear regulator there which should be good enough for this test. We don't need more than a couple of percent of accuracy on everything since this is basically intended to test lead acid batteries and those are hardly known for their very tight tolerances. So as long as we're within about 5% or so it's going to be good enough. If we ever make a revision 2 of this board it might, may or may not have a more accurate reference but uh, that's why we have this revision 1 board in order to do some characterization and test it and see how feasible this stuff is. It is basically a big experiment uh, thus far uh, and the d design has many flaws most notably the fact that we are running just three transistors which isn't really enough to do 150 watts continuously very reliably. Ideally we would be replacing this 7805 with a switching regulator uh, and running four transistors. However, the 150 watt rating on this thing is basically a bit of an overkill since you are basically never going to see 150 watts in, in this 8 of lead acid battery. They are usually between 12 and 13 volts uh, maximum uh, under load, so it's more realistic to have about 120 watts uh, after cable losses dissipated through these transistors. Now, of course, we could use uh, external load resistors on these things. Uh, for instance, a 0.39 uh, 
ohm resistor in series would uh, basically remove uh, 39 watts from the transistors on the, under the full rated 10 amp load, but that would limit our low voltage capability to uh, about 5 volts, which would basically make this unit useless for testing 6 volt batteries, and that just will not do. So we are just running with no external load resistor, we just have these current chant measuring resistors in series. Yeah, that's basically it. Now I'm going to mount this board back into the box and uh, get on with actually calibrating them. Just uh, yesterday we got a bit of a working firmware up for them uh, where we can actually save uh, uh, calibration data into the internal EEPROM, which wasn't possible before, so any calibration done was lost every time we rebooted the unit. We also have the voltage meter working now, which it wasn't uh, implemented up to up until yesterday. So uh, we can I can also calibrate the voltmeters on these units. And the reason this board is out is because the voltmeter wasn't working due to a bad solder joint on the op amp. But that's remedied now, and I need to get on with calibrating these units. So thank you for watching. Cheerio.